Halloween is right around the corner. What better way to celebrate it than by watching a terrible documentary? The video is Dracula Fact or Fiction. It's a video talking about the true origins of Dracula. Or that's the way it tries to sell itself. The video starts off with the backstory of Vlad the Impaler and then quickly jumps the fucking rails. They start talking about supernatural Dracula like he's a real thing. I'm not sure who's more crazy. The people who believe that Dracula is real or me for having to watch this video. Let's see if Dracula really is as horrifying as he's supposed to be. And let you, the viewer, decide if he's fact or fiction. My guess is you're going to go with fiction. There is legitimately no intro to this video. You get the crappy opening title sequence. Then the narrator starts talking about Dracula, the star of stage and screen. He is the star of stage and screen. And he is the professor who discovered the real Count Dracula and his castle. He then transitions into talking about the doctor who discovered the real Dracula. We are then introduced to Dr. Raymond McNally. Dr. McNally is the one who discovered that Vlad the Impaler was the real Dracula. He was an American author and a professor of Russian and East European history at Boston College. He specialized in the history of horror and wrote many books on the subject. In an interview on the website bloodlustuk.com, he was asked if he would accept an invitation by Count Dracula to be immortal. Uh, his response was, I do not wish to take the lifeblood of any human. He passed away in 2002. Dr. McNally stated that while watching the Bela Lugosi version, he realized that some of the places were real. 1958, I was watching the Late Late Show with Bela Lugosi as Dracula. I said, oh, there must be something to this story, more than... It just couldn't have been made up. All the places are impeccably correct. So he went to a map and found out that some of the places were real. So by extension, because those places are real, the story has to be based in truth. So if we are to believe him, the Bela Lugosi version is a true story. And the only reason that the movie is true is because it takes place in places that exist in our world. That is a huge fucking leap. There may be true aspects to the story, but just because it takes place in the real world doesn't mean that it's a real story. How many movies are set in real world places like LA and New York and not for one minute do people think they are true? I have never been sitting there watching Vampire in Brooklyn and thought to myself, why this takes place in Brooklyn? It has to be a true story. Although to be fair, if I was watching Vampire in Brooklyn, I would have issues. I mean, what was Wes Craven thinking? I mean, seriously, did you see Eddie Murphy's hair in that movie? Sorry, I digress. That will be for another time. So moving on, they keep showing silent movie footage to go along with the story of Vlad the Impaler. The problem is when they show this film footage, they put reenacted film footage as a disclaimer on it. Now, I have a problem with this because if you're stupid enough not to know that film didn't exist when Vlad existed, then you really need help. Nobody watching this shit would be sitting there going, yup, shot firsthand with Vlad the Impaler. Although they do interview people during this video who believe in ethereal vampires, so who the fuck knows. So the narrator says that Vlad had a strong sense of morality. The narrator says he was a law and order man. Law was determined by whatever offended him. And order was maintained by total ruthlessness. In his twisted way, Prince Vlad had a strong sense of morality. He was, it might be said, a law and order man. Law was determined by whatever offended him. And order was maintained with total ruthlessness. I'm not really sure that's a strong sense of morality. I think it's more along the lines of, hey, I'm right and you're totally fucking wrong. So do what I say, or I'm gonna kill you. We would call that a douchebag nowadays. We get to the end of the Vlad the Impaler shit, and the narrator starts to get all spooky in his speech. Later in life, Prince Vlad died in ambush at the hands of the Turks. His head was sent to the Sultan as a trophy. Monks at a monastery in the marshes near Bucharest retrieved his body, laying the evil prince in a crypt near the chapel altar. But Vlad would not accept this holy site as his final resting place. In 1931, archaeologists opened the tomb. To their horror, the casket and the body were missing. So he tells the story about how in 1931 people went to go look for Vlad's body and it was missing. So automatically we jump to it being supernatural. That's total fucking bullshit. The more mundane, believable answer of they lied where they buried him or they just threw it in a gorge because he was an asshole is more believable than that the fucker rose from the grave. Come on, this is so elementary school. 
who actually believes that he rose from the fucking grave. Vampire in Brooklyn is more believable than this shit. It's not like Vlad was really loved by anyone, so why should we be surprised that he isn't buried where he was supposed to be? And in fact, he was pursued by the Turks. They were trying to kill him. In fact, they did kill him. So maybe they hid the body and people just forgot where they hid it. Maybe the people who buried him said that they buried him there so that the Turks would go looking there and not looking in the other direction where they actually buried him. I mean, look at Alexander the Great. We have no idea where he is buried, but no one makes the jump to that he rose from the grave like a fucking mummy. Just because we turned Vlad into Dracula in the modern age doesn't mean that he was. This is basic stuff, man. So we finally finished the quote-unquote history lesson of Vlad the Impaler, and the video slightly starts to jump the rails. We are then introduced to Dr. Donald A. Reed, president of the Dracula Society. So what the fuck is that? Well, the Count Dracula Society is a non-profit group devoted to the serious study of horror films and gothic literature. Okay. Whatever. Here's your piece of trivia about Dr. Reed. Dr. Reed founded the Saturn Awards. For those of you not familiar, the Saturn Award is an award presented annually by the Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror Films. The Saturn Awards were devised by Donald A. Reed in 1972. He felt that the science fiction genre was not getting the recognition it deserved from Hollywood. Uh, the physical award is a representation of the planet Saturn with its rings composed of film. So back to Dr. Reed. Uh, he somehow managed to turn an organization named the Count Dracula Society and its yearly banquet into a must-attend for screen legends. This was in spite of the fact Dr. Reed having perhaps one of the weirdest habits ever seen outside of Transylvania. When Dr. Reed met you and spoke with you, always wearing a black suit, he would move in very close. All the while, he never looked you in the eye. Rather, he stared at your neck. Dr. Reed died in Los Angeles in 2002. And then we're introduced to the third and final interviewee, Jean Youngstown. Uh, she works for something called the Vampire Institute. So I did the typical, I'm going to go on the internet and try to find out about her. Well, guess what? I couldn't find shit out about her. So apparently she doesn't exist. Well, I did a little bit more research, and uh, you'll never guess this. I can't even believe this happened. But the video spelt her fucking name wrong. Yeah. They had three people to interview, and they spelt one name completely wrong. It's a slight variation, but come on, nobody did a fucking double check? Anyways, her real name is Janine Kings Youngson, and she founded the Count Dracula fan club, which is now called the Vampire Empire. So what does the Vampire Empire do? They're a research library. Also, that is kind of a tongue twister. The Vampire Empire... So now that we're done with all the rational talk, let's get on to the metaphysical shit. You can sense a big smelly turd is about to be laid. They start talking about vampires and mirrors and, you know, if you don't know how that works, go look it up. They talk about it like it's a real fucking thing. That dumbass Dr. Reed says to look out if you see somebody without a reflection. As if this would ever be a fucking problem. Who has never cast a fucking reflection in the history of the world? No one! Everyone has a reflection! It goes against physics. The vampire cannot cast a reflection in the mirror. This is traditional. This is accepted by everyone. If you see someone standing next to you in front of a mirror and there's no reflection, please look out. Uh, be very careful. So then the narrator says vampires once needed a castle, but today's vampires only need a dark city. Vampires once needed a castle or other remote location for their coffin. But today's vampires can make do in a dark corner of a modern city. I want to point out he's not talking about a vampire lifestyle. He's speaking about actual vampires, you know, the type that get killed by crosses. So is this where Wes Craven got the idea for Vampire in Brooklyn? It might be. So they give Miss Spelled Lady some more speaking time, and she tells us about five anti-vampire stones. The last time I was in Greece, um, a friend who knew I was interested in vampires took me to Santorini, and somewhere he managed to get these five anti-vampire pebbles. Um, you're supposed, the way it works is you hold them out uh, toward a suspected vampire and they will run screaming in the opposite direction. She doesn't really tell us what they do. You just hold them out and apparently the vampire runs away. What the fuck is that? Apparently she went to Santorini in Greece and someone sold them to her because they found out she was into Dracula. Didn't she realize that the locals might have just been pulling one over just to get some money? She's a stupid, dumb American tourist. I'm willing to bet a dollar. This wouldn't work every period. If you took these five stones and there was actually a vampire, your ass is grass. 
So then the vampire empire lady tells us that in Romania, they buried someone at a crossroads. In Romania recently, they actually buried a corpse at a crossroad because when it's reanimated, it wouldn't know which way to go. The reason the Romanians did this was to confuse the vampire when it came back. By doing that, it wouldn't know which way to go. Does that not make any sense? If we're supposed to believe the lore of vampires, don't they come back as intelligent? When he comes back, could he not just pick one way and just start heading that way? I mean, eventually he's going to run into a village. And who's ever there is going to get fucked up. So pretty much it didn't make any difference. Or is that just to me? Oh God. And then she starts reading off traditional ways to kill a vampire and two really stick out. Or a lemon in its mouth. The first one is putting a lemon in its mouth. Let that sink in for a bit. What the fuck is a lemon going to do to a vampire? Is it going to stop its fangs from fucking growing? What is a lemon supposed to do? I know it's some local traditional thing, but she doesn't say where it's from, so it doesn't help. And I couldn't find out on the internet what the fuck it was. Oh, and then, oh my god. Take a deep breath before we get to the second one. I can't even believe that this is something that somebody came up with. I feel like it was a snake oil salesman in the Middle Ages trying to sell something to people. And probably that's what it was. Give it a knitted sock to unravel. Give it a knitted sock to unravel. Give it a knitted sock to unravel. You give the vampire a knitted sock to unravel. Let me repeat that. A knitted sock to unravel. I mean, come on. Really? Really? Think about Nosferatu, 1922. Imagine giving that vampire a knitted sock to unravel. He's just going to take his claws and cut your fucking face off. How does it even kill him? Boredom? You know what? Maybe that's what Angela Bassett should have given Eddie Murphy in Vampire in Brooklyn. A knitted sock. So the video brings in another dump truck full of shit and dumps it on the viewers. Scholars say this simply is not true. The fact that Dracula and a vampire can really exist during the day but has no power. His powers are not there. Uh, that isn't realized today because as kids we grew up seeing in the theaters, on television, the movies where sunlight destroys the vampire. And it doesn't really if you believe in the reality of the vampire or you go to Stoker's 1897 novel. This time, we are told blatantly that sunlight does not kill vampires. They say with all seriousness that sunlight does not kill vampires. Are you fucking joking? One, vampires don't exist, so how is it even provable? But then again, no one's dying from fucking direct sunlight unless you count skin cancer as fucking dying from the sun, which technically it is, but it's not because you're a fucking vampire. No, sunlight doesn't work, but a stupid lemon in the mouth or a goddamn knit sock will fuck you up. So the video is coming to an end and the stupid fucking narrator starts telling us to be aware of vampires and it's like, come on, really? But beware, vampires are among us. Nobody sits awake at night worrying about fucking vampires unless they're crazy. Okay, I will admit I do. I have a house full of garlic, mirrors, and knitted socks. So I guess somebody believes vampires really exist. So as we've clearly seen, this video can't decide whether vampires are fact or fiction. Well, one could argue that vampires are both fact and they are both fiction. On the one hand, they're clearly fiction because we don't see vampires roaming the countryside. And on the other hand, they are fact. We know they exist because we have a lifestyle called vampirism. But they're not undead fucking creatures. They are people with mortgages, and some of them probably have houseplants. Maybe the video is trying to leech off the satanic cult scare from the late 1980s. I don't know. But to be fair, there are three people with doctorates on this show, and they don't help. They don't so much say that they're real, but they basically imply that they're real. At the end of the day, Dracula fact or fiction is neither fact nor is it fiction. It's just shit. Period. I mean, knitted socks. Are you fucking for real? Give it a knitted sock to unravel.
go get some ass tonight, did you? <laughs> you take your ass to Blockbuster, get a video. <laughs> pizza place. Ain't no pizza place around here, you lying motherfucker. Brooklyn. Interesting. I've been stabbed, and I've been hanged. Even broken on the rack once, but I've never been shot before. It kind of itches a little. If you're hungry, I'll run you down to KFC down the street and hit you off with a two-piece. I already had Italian. <laughs>